Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of Tea Time Roundup where you are updated on the biggest entertainment stories around you. Do stay tuned as I break down all the tea that was spilled this week on Tea Time. I am Ife Omai. Okay guys, so remember Shaitan? She's finally withdrawn the rape case against the bunch. She has officially flagged right and she's not doing it again. And she has put an end to the battle between her and the, and the celebrity. And she also wants peace more than she wants justice. And that is very much okay. I just personally couldn't wrap my head around how and when Saga Link became vital to the story. But that's by the way. And if you are wondering what this means for the band, it means that he is innocent. According to the law, at least. Moving on to something more straightforward. The Energy Generous show was put under investigations following complaints about toxic environments. So Buzz, BuzzFeed basically intervened in a few former and present staffs, which is where it was revealed the atrocity that goes down working for Ellen. Some, for someone who preaches kindness and so much um, love, this really wowed the public. We also had a beautiful guest in the studio with us, Bikia Graham Douglas. Although I had to step down during this interview because of social distancing, that interview was a banger, if I do say so myself. And it was a nice gesture to celebrate women. And, and I also have to say that she mentioned her beta universal foundation that started out of necessity. So keep a lookout for that one. Best conclusion that I saw possible. Um, Really? I, yeah, I didn't oh, think I I, it started changing after she involved Sega Link to me. When the first time that we brought him on the show, when I read that story, it was when I was like, oh, we're not going to win this fight because they're already two very contrasting um, people that she was um, that were supporting her. And I didn't see how there would be a definite conclusion, at least not the conclusion I wanted. So, Stare has always been anyone who advocates for rape um, victims. The sole, the sole, um, knowledge, uh, I say the sole the core value of the of that organization or that person is to get justice. Whether or not we're tired, whether or not the the, the odds are stacked against us, is to get justice. That's what stay also represents. But then, um, stay meaning stand to end. Rape. Yes, stand to end yeah. rape. But then, second link on the other end doesn't have that vision. If you if you want that, I'm sure he would. Um, execute that but that's not his vision his vision is to find peace whatever it's, that looks yeah. like and for and the way he came in i think I, sega link stands for justice it's not just peace. Yeah, no but it's also for the for the remember victim. sega link said it himself that he is interested in what the victim wants exactly so it's, it, it's not necessary yeah which is just justice. no it's not always victim. justice it's not, justice. It's not always <laughs> justice if i say i want to give up on fighting for justice he'll back me up in that yeah. stare wouldn't so stare would make mm -hmm. sure that they get the justice, the, uh, you see, the, the, um, that, that in itself can be argued because at the end of the day, it's, it's about, about the, the victim yeah. exactly. or whatever. So There's not a we, problem. It's not a problem. problem. I'll just tell no. you what the facts are. If you go to someone no, and no. say that you want justice and that person is, is um, made to do that, that's what they're going to get. If you decide to then withdraw, that's no, not on the uh, organization. That's yeah. on you. Yeah, so don't you think Stare is being selfish by... No, 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 I, I wouldn't use the word selfish. I think what is playing out here, I, I, I or probably... Or No, 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 no probably I've job. had this conversation it's on not this their before. job, it because I'm talking about a person's mental health. It's, it's, can, I can I lie? Can I lie? Hold up, hold up. No, Wait, I'm trying to explain something. Okay. So, I, I wouldn't agree to calling them inconsiderate. This is I don't know if I've had this conversation on this table, but this is why whenever it comes to anything that has to do with man and woman one, and maybe domestic violence mm. and rape, is a very tricky place mm. to get into because at the end of the day, yes, it's truly about the victim, but what are the facts and mm. what is right from wrong? Yes. Yeah. But at the end of the day, most times you see these women going back to their abusers. Yep. You see a rape victim saying, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I'm yeah. tired. Mm. As much as you don't want to force them to go for justice, you, you still have, have to, to respect it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you being the person who really understands from a non-sentimental yes. angle, you are kind of broken. You are kind of sad. Your movement is not going the way it's supposed yeah. to be. Not because you are selfish, mm. but because you know that this is fact and justice. <laughs> Did you hear what you said? Did you hear what you just said? Are you going to drop your tool? But did you hear what you said? You said 
when your movement is not going the way you want it to. It's not about you. Fact, did you listen to me? Did you I listen, listen to, to everything no, you, you said, but no, the part so. that you said that when your movement is not going the way that it, it bothers it bothers the NGO. Of course uh -huh. it's it is. Please, it is about who comes to you for help. And I'm no, totally, it's not. Let, I am let, totally let, let, sick let, 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 and tired of NGOs exploiting the vulnerability of people who come to them. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Let me give you an example. Wait now, guys. I've been like, I don't need, I don't need. Wait. I'm sick and tired of NGOs exploiting the vulnerability of those who come to them for help. And you think you have the know-how on say-all and all of that. Now, Spare said they came up with 1.6 million there. None of it has been remitted to Shayton. Are you guys aware of that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Was it, was it, it meant wasn't, to be remitted all, to Shayton? Exactly. And Spare did not and do the... And the lawyer did not charge Shayton a dime. Dude, they gave And they you... wanted to give her a lawyer. She ha Even though she had... A lawyer on retainer. They wanted to give her a lawyer. And then did you guys read Shaiton's statement where they tried to drag Sega Link again? They did not try to drag they Sega did. Link. Did and Sh so why did Shaiton apologize? Because obviously Sega Link's feelings are touched by the fact that they're saying so, oh, the truth. Okay, Listen, so Sega Link's feelings are touched and Shaiton felt the need to apologize course, for Sega Link's feelings that are touched. Exactly. What, she, what, are we what saying, she was correcting in her statement was that I think the people from Stay and the other side thinks that Sega Link was the one who initiated the um, peaceful meeting, quote unquote, yes. between Shaiton and the, the band's team. But she is coming out to say, no, I was the one who reached out to Sega to yeah. say, I need this. That was Stare, what she was correcting. Stare, yeah. Stare also kind of lied when they said they moved her from safe house to safe house to safe house to safe house. Has Trying she come to, out to say they didn't move her? They didn't move her from her. She, she's she been in the hotel all along. Which they said they paid for. <sighs> So why are they saying? Okay, this is not about how that. the money was spent. Or it how it, it was is about spent. that because no, if you, I, this is not about money. You, you know what? You know what? You know what? This is also about people donating for justice. People donating for a cause. Do you understand? Okay, so from and what, what thing, I from what they, I know about Stair, they they're not the ones actually in charge of the money, and they mentioned the company that was in charge of it. I didn't bother looking too deep because I didn't think this was going to be a conversation. But those people are. They, that's what they do. They tell you how every single thing was spent and what it was accountable for. And they did the exa exact same thing with this case. And no, nobody, no party, not even social media, has first time I'm hearing that. it, that has questioned that. So I don't know where that's coming from. But you have to understand that people are built for something, which was trying, I was, what I was trying to explain. For example, now, if I had cancer, God forbid, and I went to a hospital and they started giving me chemotherapy and they said, that's what's going to get me to fight. And I said, you know what? My beliefs or whatever, I don't want to do chemotherapy anymore. They cannot encourage me. The hospital cannot encourage me that's to say, Wait, well, it's, it's the that's, same that's, thing. No, it's not what the, the hospital thing. is built for is to give you medical. Wait now. Wait, if it's not, if, if, with that chemo, not, not because I don't get um, chemotherapy doesn't mean I'm going to die. It's not that. And my beliefs. So the workplace environment is under investigation following complaints about toxic environments. As revealed in an internal memo sent out, Wana Media has retained an outside consultant to interview current and former. Ellen um, employees about their experience working on the popular daytime syndicated talk show. As reported by Variety, the investigation follows a recent BuzzFeed report alleging a toxic work culture based on anonymous testimonials by one current and 10 former employees who said they faced racism, bullying, and intimidation. Hmm. Wow. Uh. This, this, this is crazy though, but I think it's applicable in every workplace. There's something called office politics and it's not about being toxic, it's about how you manage it, although some attitudes are also not acceptable. Did you reach the kind of statements that um, some of those... Yeah, like um, your hair, that um, I, I mistook you for another black person because mm -hmm. of your hairstyle and stuff like that. So what I'm saying is that um, in every environment, there's always toxicity, so it's not like it's new. So it's how you choose to manage your environment that really counts. But it doesn't mean it is acceptable. That was where I was getting to. That it doesn't mean it is acceptable. And it is high time that people start calling out because things need to be done right. The fact that you work in a certain place doesn't mean you should um, be treated less and all that. So it's not just 
and it's not just something that is new, but it's how we've been keeping silence about it that has been the problem. So I'm glad that a lot of these employees are beginning to talk, and maybe this will set an example for other work environments like that, where you have to work with people in production, in management, and then you look down on some people because of their certain roles and stuff like that. I think every human deserves to be treated properly, so... That's just the bottom line. Yeah, so I so like the way they're going about this because it will set a precedence and then all the work. Look at, the, um, for instance, what's doing Wade's wife, name, um, the actress. Gabriel it? Union. Gabriel Union, okay. when she complained about America's Got Talent and now they used to smoke during church, which is not allowed in that place, and how um, a lot of people were being treated, racism, raci um, slow comments and all that. So I think it's something that it has become a trend now. So people are beginning to pay attention to the workplace, our people being treated in such environment, because it's really important, especially when you need productivity of your staff. I like um, how the story um, is going. I like that this is not exactly an Ellen issue. Mm. It is just the people that are working in the place. And of mm. course, because she is the face of the show, her name, her name is the name of the show. Mm. So everything still revolves around her. But when you, I mean, when you look at the headline at face value, you think it's about her Ellen, yeah. and if she has done something wrong to someone working with her mm. or for her. But um, I'm happy that's not the case. I'm also happy that the producers of the show are taking responsibility mm -hmm. and um, they are not trying to act like they don't know what is going on. Mm. They say it is their responsibility to take care of people that work uh, with them or for them and they are going to do everything within their own power to cooperate and make sure that people working with them don't feel this way. So that's, I think that's a good side of the story for me because no one is trying to push the blame or around mm -hmm. or bring somebody down. They're owning up to it. And I'm hoping that this um, investigation by the um, private consultants, of course, by Warner mm -hmm. Media would help set the record straight and mm. maybe have some level of standard of procedure or standard of working environments that would help people feel okay. Because like you said, aside to your house, as an adult, you spend most of your time at work. So mm -hmm. what happens in your work environment would definitely affect your mental health. And it's, it's just um, amazing for people to be able to even call their workplace another home for them, exactly. basically. Your time. Everyone's glowing because we've had this time, you know, to we're relax. not wearing makeup all the mm. time and just relaxing at home. Mm -hmm. So everyone's looking really nice. You're looking very lovely. I can't do this because I've been wearing makeup. I know, my time, darling, but it doesn't show. It's okay. Yeah. You're, you're glowing. I see the sun okay. on no, your face. No, this is about you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, before we get into what you do and yeah. your passion for art, let's talk about something that has uh -huh. been trending online, which is um, the Women Supporting Women Challenge, uh -huh. where, I mean, you just wake up and see someone post a black and white picture uh -huh. and say, challenge accepted. <laughs> and we've seen Don Jazzy being part of it, and he's disguising <laughs> as a woman and some other men as well. I don't know why they think yeah, they I'm, have I'm to, that, but um, that's that's really cool. Yeah, but Don Jazzy's been very entertaining this he season. Has, he has, he has. We really do appreciate it. However, him. there is yeah. a conversation around um, people not understanding why, why the movement is. Mm -hmm. I've seen two sides of the story. One is saying it's about femicide in Turkey, and another is saying it's about supporting a House of Rep member who was um, said, who got a sexy statement. And mm -hmm. I know, but basically it's about supporting women. But the femicide one is kind of very touching because mm -hmm. it's about men killing yeah. women and nothing is being done to um, bring justice, yeah. put it that way. So, what do you think about this um, challenge? and how some people are also not in support of it. You know what, people have a right to feel how they want to feel. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, I approached it as women just supporting women and all celebrating each other. And the people who nominated me, Ochoma Apota, Osas, and um, there was somebody also nominated, and Jessica Bongos, yeah. they're, they're my friends and you know my, my colleagues and people I respect very much. And mm -hmm. obviously they have a mutual respect for me. Mm -hmm. And all the women that I nominated, 20 women. Amazing. And it's just women who are doing amazing things in their space. So I don't think it's that much of a big deal that people should say, oh, it's not good, and it's, and, oh, it's good. I, I even had one person who said to me, you know what, Biki, I really do appreciate it, but I'll decline because I'm thinking about the other women who may not get people nominate them. And I completely respected okay. that. Yeah, yeah but... Um, 
you know, it's just, it's your prerogative what you want to do with it. Mm. And, you know, I think it's a nice gesture for us to celebrate women and just see all these women in their spaces doing amazing things. All right, so things. let's take it away from yeah. um, the reason why we're even having this challenge, because I uh -huh. think this is a conversation that has been ongoing for a while mm -hmm. about women trying to bring all the women down, especially in the entertainment industry. And mm -hmm. this is your sector right now. Yeah. So do you think it's actually a thing in the entertainment industry where women kind of like, have hatred for each other or they're looking for ways to bring each other down? You know, when people say that, it really breaks my heart that they do because um, my 12 years in this industry, a lot of women have stood for me, by me, and giving me opportunities. So I, I have not really experienced when they say women hate women. The truth is they're good and bad people, even mm, men too. Sure. You'll see men who get along and men who don't get along. Mm -hmm. You'll see people who are jealous and envious of each other. Mm. It's nothing to do with gender. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely disagree I with that. I think you just spoke for me. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> let's talk about you being in the industry for 12 yeah. years and yeah. looking at your profile and how you carry yourself and all you do. You said these are the ones that are professional <laughs> in what they do. Mm -hmm. So what has been, what's the journey? like what's the experience what is it that you think you need to change right now mm -hmm. to get the industry to the next level um, well, the journey has been good for me. I've learned so much along the way. I've had failures, you know, but mm -hmm. I just pick myself up and I keep going. Rome wasn't built in a day. Definitely. And I always say, to, there's a saying from where I'm, a, I'm from Calabari, and they say, Oruenene, meaning everybody has their day. Yeah. And I go by that, and I just feel you just need to be consistent. Mm -hmm. If you keep doing the work, your day will come. Somebody may be in the industry for two years and blow, and in the next year, they're gone. But if you have longevity, you know, it's, it's better for you. Let's look at the biggest names in um, Hollywood today. You see Viola Davis and Octavia Spencer, people like that we're celebrating today. Mm. It didn't happen in one day. Even me. Oprah didn't get there in one day. Sure. Denzel did not. They're so why do obstacles. you think you do not want to do the work and you want results? Mm. So I just feel like, you know, people need to give themselves time mm -hmm. and they need to focus on honing their craft, yeah. perfecting your skills. And the truth is, in time, when your day comes, people will look for you. You won't need to look for anyone. Yeah, yeah. So like for me, what I feel I need to do better, I'm rubbish on social media. Mm. Honestly, I am rubbish on social media. And my fans actually write to me that we want to hear more from you. So I'm now trying to be better. Yeah, that's nice. I, yes. I think you can be better anyway. Yes, but maybe indeed. being away from social media and not really consuming it is the reason why you still maintain a level of professionalism yeah. because there are people i think from what you said about people not understanding that there are years of um, work before mm -hmm. that social media has kind of fueled that as well so mm -hmm. you just come and see a person's picture they're looking good they're looking nice you don't know what they've had to go through True. or what they had to do to get to that point so that's yeah. pretty amazing and if social media works for you and you know we could become an overnight star i really celebrate them and you know i'm happy for them mm. everyone's journey is different yeah definitely. but we all need to try to equip ourselves with the for the world we live in today so i definitely get to that point welcome back guys i am sure you enjoy that because i did rick hassani is basically set to create original music for david oyelowo and oprah winfrey's film talk about a brag and we are very thrilled about it on tea time just because the majority of nigerians don't rate his style of, of genre of music doesn't mean that others don't. So thank you, Rick, for putting us in the map in a way that hasn't really been done before. Okay, so you know how I mentioned during the first segment of today's show that Ellen was being probed. Well, Ellen broke her silence on this particular matter and basically said she is disappointed and that she is sorry. There's, there's nothing Ellen can do in my mind that's wrong, to be honest. And I have to give her, like we mentioned on the show, that she apologized and she took hold Oh, she, she took responsibility, basically, so look out for that. Rick, Rick. Hassani, I'm so happy, so, so happy for, for um, him. I think we were talking one time about stories where, like, you might not blow, but then somebody's watching mm -hmm. your progress, and then you win in your own right, even mm -hmm. if it's not fame. I think he's one of those people that, mm. he's not the loudest person, like, if we're talking about the big guns or whatever, but he's still, I feel like, because he's, he's stay consistent in being um, genuine to his niche mm -hmm. and his sound. He hasn't really compromised trying to do what everybody, like, do, do, do the sellable trick. He hasn't ever really done that. And he's still trying to put his efforts out there and give us good music. I, obviously, it's nice to then see that that has now been looked at and is being rewarded. Yeah. 
I also share that train of thought that um, the fact that it's not on your play, it's not a genre on your playlist doesn't mean it's not doing well. Mm. You understand? So there are a lot of people that we necessarily do not have to listen to, but we know their names here and there. And we're wondering, mm. where are these guys? What are they doing? What are mm. they up to? But there are people that the same way that we listen to our faves, right? And we're checking up on what they're doing on a daily. That's the same way somebody's checking on Rika Sani. What's mm. he doing? What type of mm. music has he dropped? Because he has his fun base. Yeah, he has mm. his fun base as well so that's one thing i want a lot of people to just always remember that look the fact that it's not your genre doesn't mean that this person is not doing well so when i saw this i was like yeah great stuff yeah. and knowing that rikasani is also on the mavens am i correct on that or oh, he has affiliations with, okay no that's um johnny drill because yeah, they have the same the family, yeah, yeah because yeah. they have the same type of music and he's done a lot of features with johnny drill as well that's why i mixed that up but um just to let you know that people like that also have great music. I've listened to a few Rika Sanis, and it's one of those guys that you just know that they know their stuff. Definitely. It's not like he's some guy that just came into the R&B scene or soul mm -hmm. or, or he just wants to do it because he wants... No, he actually knows his stuff. This is his stuff. So when I saw this, I was like, yeah, way to go. Big stuff for you, bro. Mm -hmm. All right. To touch on that as well, I mean, I've said it before on this table, and maybe it's important to repeat it again, that when it comes to music business, it is way broad, and it's not just about the faves that would like to say they are number one to ten. There are so many people you don't even know exist that, that are making money. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, events are closed down right now, but there are bands that are making, like, cashing out real good every weekend in Lagos State and that goes for across the world as well. So music business is broad. It's not mm. just about social media and the noise and who you think you listen to. As mm. long as you can grow your fan base and it even gets better now now that the, the world is now just a global Digital. village, you know. So you can reach fans from everywhere and it will be counted. Nobody's coming to ask you, are these fans from Nigeria or mm. from this? You just have a figure that is um, churning out incomes for you. So whatever you're doing, stay focused um, on your grind and um, understand why you're doing what you're doing. Agreed. Nobody's coming. She's disappointed and sorry. In an internal memo obtained by Variety, she thanked everyone for the show's success and said she took responsibility on everything that happened on the show. She also promised to do her part in continuing to push herself and everyone around her to learn and grow and that it's important to her and to Warner Bros that everyone who has something to say can speak up and feel safe doing so. There's just something about Erlen that um, she, can she can never, never go, go wrong. wrong. I just need that how you like, finish it. Like, um, she, she knows the right things to say, the right time to say it. And, you know, she allowed the whole thing die down. She allowed the guy, that the major mm. guy that is being accused mm. to say he was going to step down before she came out to even speak about it. Like, things were already in mm. place. So it's mm. not like I'm coming to apologize and we're not doing anything mm. about it. We've actually done things, investigation, Before, yeah. then I'm coming out to let you guys know how deeply sorry I am. Mm. I know I let you guys down, I'm a role model, mm. this, this, that. So I just think that's amazing and a lot of leaders should take a cue from this. That yeah. Don't just come up to be defensive. Sometimes we're whole humans, you can be wrong, you can make mistakes. So just come out and say, I'm sorry, I didn't see it this way. I don't even, she didn't even give any excuse for mm -hmm. whatever it was. She just admitted that yes, it shouldn't be like that. Everyone should be treated appropriately and um, I just admired that. I like that you brought up timing because the way you respond to things for me shows innocence. Mm. And kind of, when you were saying innocence, I just kind of, I don't shake table shot. But when somebody is genuinely innocent, I didn't mean the harm, the way they respond, I feel like you can't hide mm. through your actions whether or not you were innocent or not. Because this lady has mm. a lot of power and influence to be able to just shut the whole thing down and silence mm -hmm. her and whatever, and silence him rather. But she didn't do any of that. I think that there is a lot of, because she is kind of known for being lovey-dovey and good and perfect, the news is very extreme to her brand but there actually isn't anything new in having an environment with of people mm. where it becomes toxic like i don't think there's any organization that has more than five people and you wouldn't have a clash you mm. wouldn't have someone who mm. it says a racist comment or says a sexist comment or does something like i think it's just really natural so mm. for even when i read the story i didn't think as long as it wasn't harsh out on somebody calling somebody the n-word or something i didn't really see it as a big deal but even the way she has 
um, responded is still very true to her character that she has a lot of a lot of empathy mm -hmm. for for people in general. You can see that on the show, and you can see that with how she handled this. And I, I really really like that. You said you weren't going to shake because you two have said everything I need to see. So you said you weren't going to shake tables. What was that table that you would? Have um, uh, when he was explaining it, mm -hmm. I, it just kept ma making me think about Dibanji's uh, response ah. to Shaitan. Like for somebody who <laughs> I'm not saying he's innocent or guilty, yeah. but for someone the way he responded, he yeah. definitely uses power to kind of shake oppressed and for me if you were really relaxed like the way she was where it was really beyond me and i have nothing to hide you just allow things to happen naturally because mm. then you can you can put mm. your empathy to it but yeah. if i know i'm hiding something and i'm like uh, mm, uh, maybe i've actually called people all names i'll stuff. be like mm, guys no you know you'll be making threats you'll be doing threats you'll be putting law whatever so you try to find a way to cup the whole thing she, so, didn't, she didn't try to make any excuse she just admitted she just said she's sorry and things will get better that's yeah. just the way to go Unfortunately, that's all we can take for today's episode. If you did enjoy today's episode like I did, then don't forget you can watch more of Tea Time on our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can also catch the Tea Time crew live on Monday to Friday at 10.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. on DSTV Channel 408 across Africa. Signing out is your favorite if you're my. Enjoy your weekend.